With graphics cards getting better and better, gamers are slowly graduating from 1080p, but still cannot go 4K yet. Why? Because RTX 4080 expensive. So how? Go 1440p lah! In this video, I'm going to tell you everything you need to know before you run out there and buy yourself a brand new 1440p monitor. Your mother no teach? Never mind. Abang Bayong. And no, consoles don't count because you're all still playing Masa Masa with Starfield at 4K 30fps. 2023 also almost end already lor. And before we get into it, no, I'm not a console hater. I have a PS5 at home. And can you see? Xbox controller. But as a disclaimer, right, ViewSonic did send this uh, VX2728J2K over for uh, demonstration purposes, but everything that I'm about to say in this video is still valid uh, in case you decide to buy any other monitor. But you know what? If you think this video is helpful, right, feel free to check out the links in the description. Anyways, let's just get right into it. Firstly, let's talk about the panel type of your monitor, which will influence your uh, response time, color accuracy, and viewing angle. Here, we have all the LCD panel types ranked according to these aspects uh, as of September 2023 if you are buying new. If you mainly play competitive titles and you really care about that response time, then go for TN. Uh, for everything else, I recommend VA or IPS. However, it seems like TN is slowly getting phased out because VA and IPS have essentially caught up in terms of response type. As mainly a AAA title gamer, my preferred choice is of course IPS, uh, which is also the overall winner here. Take this ViewSonic VX2728J2K for instance, while it has an IPS panel, its response time is actually pretty fast, which makes it pretty good for gaming. There is also Mini LED, which is basically a fancier IPS panel with more granular backlight control and more local dimming zones as well as OLED which is still quite a bit more expensive and they haven't quite fixed the burn-in issue yet uh, that can be more prevalent when you're using it as a monitor because when you're using your PC you're gonna have a lot of static images that stay on screen for a long time. Number two, we have size and aspect ratio. So for gaming monitors, the most common aspect ratio is 16 by nine. Uh, though gaming laptops are getting more and more equipped with 16 by 10 aspect ratio screens. So here are the common sizes that 16 by nine aspect ratio gaming monitors come in. Uh, in my opinion, the ideal combo would be 24 inch 1080p, 27 inch uh, 1440p or 4K, and 32 inch with a 4K. This VX2728J2K, for instance, is a 27-inch 1440p monitor, which gives you a pixel density of 108 pixels per inch and a very ideal uh, viewing distance of 1.5 feet. If you don't have the budget or your space is limited, then go for a 24-inch 1080p monitor. And if you have all the money in the world to spend like me, like a Bangsa one, then just get 4K lah, because then why are you watching this video? Just check out our other Your Mother No Teach video on 4K gaming monitors. So thirdly, we have refresh rate. If you jump from 60 hertz to 144 hertz, which is the most common uh, refresh rate for gaming monitors, then you will definitely notice a very obvious improvement. The next step up would be 240 hertz for more competitive gamers. And if you are super, super kiasu, there's even 360 hertz gaming monitors. But if you're still getting pwned in CSGO, then maybe you can CSGO away and play other games lah. A 180Hz refresh rate is a solid middle ground like the one on our VX2728J2K for instance. Although it's a little awkward and it's done via an overclock, the native refresh rate is probably 165Hz or something. Next, we're going to talk about response time, which we briefly spoke about just now. Response time measures the time it takes for a pixel on your monitor to switch from black to white or from one shade of grey to another shade of grey. There is also MPRT, which is moving picture response time, which measures how long a pixel on your monitor overstays for. Like your one friend that just broke up with his girlfriend and wouldn't leave from your couch. Basically, if the response time is too high, then you're gonna get a lot of uh, ghosting or motion blur, which is like all this trail of annoying things behind fast-moving objects like a speeding car. Also, in faster-paced first-person shooters like Valorant, you know, it can distract you because you cannot 
properly pinpoint the positions of your enemy and cause you to misfire. At least you will have an excuse lah if you're shooting like a stormtrooper. I always ask people to take the advertised monitor response time with a grain of salt because there is no actual standard way to measure response time. But in general, anything below 5 milliseconds is pretty acceptable for gaming. This VX2728J2K for instance has listed three different sets of response times. However, after testing it out for a few days, I can say that it's actually pretty fast. On to color accuracy, which measures how well your monitor reproduces colors and hues correctly. Color accuracy is very important for gaming because it will affect your immersion. If the colors of your monitor is dodgy, then it doesn't matter how expensive your PC is, you're just depriving yourself of a complete gaming experience. Damn developers spent months and months to make their game environments very immersive and beautiful, down to a single blade of grass beneath your boots, but your dodgy monitor just wants to show you a pink Ifrit in Final Fantasy VII. He's Ifrit, not Barbie. Anyways, the color gamuts that you need to familiarize yourself with as a gamer in ascending order in terms of width or range of colors are Firstly, sRGB for the internet. Secondly, you have Rec 709 for HDTV. And thirdly, you have DCI-P3 that is used for digital cinema. For example, this ViewSonic VX2728J2K has a DCI-P3 coverage of 90%, which means that it can actually show you pretty accurate colors when you are gaming. Though you are still more likely to notice differences in response time and refresh rate uh, during gameplay. To briefly touch on HDR, uh, honestly to display HDR content properly, especially on an IPS panel that doesn't have class leading contrast, you would need maybe 800 to 1000 nits, which this monitor is nowhere as bright as. However, HDR is still very dependent on the content, so I wouldn't worry too much about it unless you are willing to spend top dollar on your gaming monitor. Number 5, we have ergonomics which is very important especially for them super long sessions. Ideally, you want a monitor like this VX2728J2K that has a stand that tilts, swivels as well as height adjust. Though I almost always recommend that you get a monitor arm because it's even more flexible than that and allows you to position your monitor however you want and it saves up your desk space for you to put more things. Just make sure that your monitor comes with a VESA compatible mount like this one. Finally, we have QOL which is quality of life features. Okay, It is very important to have multiple display ports or HDMI ports in case you want to connect multiple devices at the same time like well this VX2728J2K. Also, if you're using a gaming laptop, having a monitor that has a USB-C port that does display output as well as uh, power delivery will be great because you can charge your laptop at the same time. Anyways, that's everything I have to say about 1440p gaming monitors. In my opinion, 1440p gaming monitor is worth upgrading for because 4K is still very expensive. Also, you can flex on them console people because they don't have this sweet spot that we call the middle ground at 1440p. They are stuck at either 1080p or 4K that is not very good. If you thought this video was helpful, then please check out the links in the description as it will support us to make more content like this and won't cost you anything extra. Also, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit that notification bell harder than you would hit alternate F4 when you are losing. On top of that, you can also follow us on TikTok, Facebook and Instagram to see more shenanigans from the Mob House crew. Again, my name is Shane, the Bang Sawan, and I will see you when, when, in the next one.